Hey, Ugly Mug friends out there. All right, so today I am joined with a good friend of Ugly Mugs. We've seen him at several of our uh, conferences and uh, classes that we've put on. This is Cody Walker with Play On Theater Company. Um, this is a local theater company here in uh, central Louisiana. It's been around for about two years. They've done some amazing, wonderful shows. Um, they work with young kids and then they do uh, shows with adults. So um, it's just a really fun theater company here locally and Cody is just really awesome. So we are going to talk today about how this has obviously affected um, them doing shows. They had actually just cast a show. We'll talk about that and um, they're going to have to push that back. Um, so we're just going to talk all things theater. So hey Cody, how are you? Hey Jessica, I'm great. Thank you so much for doing this. It's so awesome. Awesome. So tell me uh, or tell everybody a little bit about Play on Theater Company. Well, Play on Theater Company is something that my wife, uh, Lexi, and I started about two years ago, I think. Uh, might have been a little bit, a little bit more than two years ago, but we didn't start producing shows until last year. Um, and we, uh, it, it's more of a passion project, I think, for us. Um, we're very passionate about bringing good theater um, with, uh, with a purpose to central Louisiana. Um, it's, it's something that I've done my entire life. I started theater in Alexandria. Um, I grew up in Grant Parish and uh, we didn't have theater companies or uh, <laughs> theater in school there. So the only way that I was able to do theater was with Family Playhouse, which is actually how I met you first. Um, so, Family Playhouse like started my love for theater. It was Abel Alina Owens and Bill Bush, who we were kind of talking about earlier, used to write these great children's shows. And it and when I first showed up, I remember um, our my friends Brittany and Lee. They had to sing with me at my first audition because I was so nervous and so so fun to think back to that time whenever I couldn't even do an audition and I had to sing Happy Birthday with two people that later became my friends, um, that I started there and then I was able to move on and, and go to a really good uh, performing arts college in Oklahoma and then go even further and perform around America and then start this, this great life um, in, in the arts for myself. And then to be able to come back to central Louisiana and to open up our own theater company and bring um, bring back some some passion and and uh, and things that we've learned from from around the country and uh, educate the the kids that are coming up much like I did um, whenever I first started has been uh, it's been a huge blessing really we're, I feel very lucky that we're able to do it yeah and it's it's so true with you know getting to do some of the passions you know when we looked back when we were growing up there wasn't a whole lot of a lot of things here in central Louisiana. And so now that there's an abundance of all of these arts and, you know, River Oaks and, and uh, just all these different arts uh, around here. So it's so great. Um, so I know that this probably wasn't a question, but it just kind of popped in my head. What has been your favorite show that you've ever done, whether it was way back when, here recently what's been your favorite show you've ever you've ever acted in and then what's been your favorite show thus far to direct oh my goodness that is <laughs> you really put me on the spot that's a huge question um you know the very first show that i ever did uh professionally was macbeth in chicago it was at chicago shakespeare and i actually was lucky enough to to land a an understudy role and then to also like cover the fights. So I remember the first time that I, like it will always be in my brain, it was such a nauseating experience. <laughs> I had just graduated uh, college and I had landed this part and then um, I, I was, uh, we, we hadn't started uh, understudy rehearsals yet. And in the professional world, when you're understudying, most of the time there, there are tracks, like you understudy this part but it is also like maybe three or four other parts and since i was really good with sword fighting and those other kind of things i was covering all of the fight scenes too so if somebody went out or they were injured i would be able to jump in and fight for them and then um the week of previews like in the professional world you get a week of previews and then it kind of serves as their tech week like they're doing tech at night and previews in 
the day or tech in the day and then previews at night. Um, and so it was the week of previews and the guy that was playing um, Angus went out and I was covering that role. And I had never had a rehearsal. I just was lucky enough to have worked really hard and knew my lines. And I remember I was, I, they called me and I had 30 minutes to get from my uh, apartment, which was on the north side of Chicago, all the way downtown, um, and then get fitted for a costume, um, get taught the fights and the blocking. And they had like three assistant stage managers that just followed me. And so I'm getting put into wardrobe and people are sewing things onto me. <laughs> and this guy this, who's the fight captain is going over the fights with me, trying to like tell me what to expect whenever I go out there. And then I had 15 minutes with him where he went over the fight. There was this huge fight scene at the very beginning that I had to be in. And so he went over the fight with me and I'm in the wings and I'm waiting to go on. And um, the look behind me and the uh, assistant stage manager that had my arm so that like <laughs> literally people pulling me and throwing me around, they had my arm and in the other hand, she had a bucket. And I was like, what is that for? She said, you're going to puke. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to puke. She said, no, you're going to puke. And I looked out, like the lights started to go down. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to puke. <laughs> and I like turned my head to start to throw up. And she shoved me onto the stage because I had waited too long. I had to run out there and just pray that I made it through that sword fight. And I remember going through that whole sword fight and then being thrown. There was like this massive thing of sand that I had to die in at the end of it. And I remember hitting that sand and breathing out and thinking, oh my God, I think I did it. I don't think I died. So in my mind, that kind of pops out as a really cool experience because it was my first moment on this gorgeous stage where I was trying to get to throughout my whole career really. But the thing that I was probably most passionate about was a company I worked with called Montana Shakespeare in the Parks. And they kind of pushed me into the, to the path that I, that I, uh, that I am now of coming back to central Louisiana because they worked mainly in, in communities that didn't have the arts. They would, they were, you know, Montana's really big and this was a tour in the North, um, in the North. Oh my goodness. Never reached right every week and Northwest. <laughs> I was trying so hard to remember um, in the Northwest and they went to Idaho and all over Montana and North Dakota and um, Iowa, uh, not Iowa. Oh my goodness, Washington. Uh, and <laughs> this has been really great. He's an actor, not in geography. Um, so they, uh, they brought really good professional quality theater with professional actors from Chicago and, and Seattle to these local communities where some of these communities only had like 15 people living in them. And they would wait all year to see this, to see Shakespeare. It was amazing amazing I, it was I, i'll never forget that experience and i remember talking to somebody else who had worked with that company and they said you know when you go back to chicago it's going to be really hard to get back into doing theater again in this you know very urban community um you know up there it was it was about like I, i've always felt that theater is is here to bring change and in Chicago, it felt like we were doing theater for people who already thought and believed everything that I already thought and believed. And they had so much accessibility to the arts. You know, there are over 600 theaters in Chicago and it's huge and there's theater of all kinds. And it really got me thinking, I was kind of hit like a low point and I thought, you know, I think maybe I need to go home and bring this theater, you know, this education back to our community. This is a very long answer for what you asked, but this is what you, you get put an actor in an interview situation. It's what you're going to get. <laughs> I'm sorry. So my, my favorite show is probably like, I'd say it was that first Macbeth, which I've gotten to do that show a couple of times. And I, it is a lot of fun. Um, and then a favorite show that I've, I've gotten to direct. Mm, you know, I, I get to, we have play on theater, but we, we get to work. And with a lot of different people, which is, you know, you mentioned all these other arts organizations. And I, I've been so thankful that coming back, I've been able to work with almost each and every single one of them. And 
uh, you know, uh, earlier, the, the first show of this season was a staged reading that we got to do with River Oaks, which is really cool. So it was a reading about art, and we got to do it at River Oaks, which was awesome, um, in the art gallery. And that was so cool getting to work with Aubrey and with Rachel. I mean, they're just, they're so awesome. You have such a community of, of yes people, and you need people that are going to say yes and to take a chance on you know, something that may not necessarily make money, but it is good for our community, which is really what the arts are. You're not going to make money in the arts, but it, you know, when you have arts in your community, it, it thrives. And, you know, this year I'm also going to get to work with the uh, Alexandria Museum of Art soon. And we're going to do, um, that was a show that we were planning on doing was they had these children's illustrations. And so we're building a show that now is going to be virtual, but we're building a show that will be for kids and for families that does, that deals with these illustrations. Um, but getting to work with these other people, we get to work a lot with the uh, Fox theater in Marksville. And one of my, uh, favorite theatrical experiences coming back was getting to direct Annie out there. It was the first, um, it was the, it was the first show that I, like, big show that I had gotten to do here really and um, with adults and with kids and I was so impressed with how passionate this this small community was about getting to put on this musical you know and, and had the, the kids that showed up like everybody was just a hundred percent in the show and I would have toured that show anywhere in the country I would have I would have felt good letting anybody see that show because the work that these people put into it was amazing and I remember watching it and thinking yeah I made the right choice I made the right choice to come back it was a really long answer <laughs> so, so sorry <laughs> no that was great so one thing that I've seen from obviously you know your business owner as well you know owning yeah. a company with your wife um <laughs> shout out to Lexi um, yeah <laughs> um but it's so awesome to have gotten to talk to a lot of different business owners in very different um, capacities, occupations, and how passionate they are for what they do. And so, no, I thought your answer was fine. It could have been another 45 minutes and it would have been okay because it just shows. Well, it can be. I mean, I can talk, I can talk a little bit more if you <laughs> like. Um, <laughs> So we had talked earlier about one of the shows that you had just cast and you said that you thought it was probably one of the most perfect casting choices uh, was To Kill a Mockingbird. So you guys are just pushing it back. It'll just be later in the year. But how, how, what was your reaction to, you know, oh my gosh, we're going to have to move this or cancel. How did all that, you know, kind of go? Yeah, you know, we kind of saw, um, we saw, like most people, I think, who are business owners, saw this this happening, this coming down the pipeline, that the possibility of what was going to happen to our businesses was going to be huge. And so you start preparing all these different scenarios, like what happens if this happens, if this happens. And, and I think that's probably, I'm sure, what every other business owner was doing, um, especially ones that I've talked to. You start throwing out all these different scenarios and plan a through like Z really of what we're going to do. Um, so for To Kill a Mockingbird, it was, you know, I, I don't mean to sound like a, I, I don't want to sound negative at all, but it was incredibly disappointing. <laughs> it was very, very heartbreaking because, you know, we, you, you, when you do theater, it's not, it's hard to think about everything that goes into it from the beginning. You know, we have been talking about doing To Kill a Mockingbird now for a year and a half, I think. And and this, the process for creating a show starts then. From the moment that you start talking about, hey, do you want to do this? I mean, we read the novel twice. We started talking about what it'll be like to put it on stage. We read different versions of it. There are different adaptations of it. You know, you start working from the beginning and just hours and hours and months and all that stuff just put into it. You know, we had design meetings where we met with um one of the the most brilliant and it, it's awesome that that he's here and i am so lucky to have known him for so long but um kendall from who works here in the community he's, he's been around um since he was a kid his, his family's you know been a part of uh 
been a part of the art scene and he is an amazing designer and talk about somebody with passion you know it's it's great getting to talk to him and to create stuff and we had this beautiful plan put together for uh for this show and we also had um our good friend who was in uh, greater tuna with me uh chris mcdowell who is going to assistant direct the show and so me and Chris and Kendall had sat down. We went to the theater. We, we block everything out. We're, we're ready to go. Like this is, we created this feeling. We, we have the, the, the music designed, the set designed, the lights designed, and we meet with our cast after casting. And um, we have our first read through. And it was, I mean, I, I wish now looking at it, the hindsight, I guess it's 2020. I didn't know quarantine was going to happen. I wish that I had set up like, five video cameras and just filmed the read through because I could have just put that all together and sent it out to people. And it would have been a beautiful performance to see the first read through of this show was one of the best first reads that a, a read through is whenever you sit down with the entire cast and the design team with just the script and you're around this big table and you, you read the script as a cast for the first time. Um, it's when the cast really first meets each other and what roles they had. And sitting there as the director, I was listening to these, you know, these gorgeous people read this this amazing script. And it was heartbreaking. I mean, I mean, it just they did such a beautiful job. I, you know, I'm a very emotional person, probably. I wear it on my sleeve, but um luckily my wife was sitting next to me and she just kept putting her hand over she was like it's okay because <laughs> I, I just kept breaking down because they were doing such a good job i mean this show relies so heavily on three kids and um uh scout jim and uh and dill and we had some amazing children i mean we, I mean, we still have them they're they're we're we're luckily i think we're still holding on to our to the kids that we had in the cast but they did such a beautiful job in their maturity for their age and understanding the, the um, intensity of the script was beautiful. So I'm thankful in a way that we got that first read. And in another way, it was almost even more heartbreaking because I saw the show from the very first, I mean, from the very first read, I could see how the whole thing was going to play out. And then when we, you know, found out that, um, we were getting these stay at home orders and uh, you know, my, my wife Lexi works for the Louisiana special education school in um, Alexandria. And so they were getting communications from the governor's office about what was going to happen to them. And so I was, I remember sitting at the kitchen table and listening to, to her read these emails and what was going to happen. And I just remember thinking like, what are we going to do? You know, I mean, we, we've put, you know, all these marketing dollars into this show if people can't go to the theater, like if they can't leave their house, they're not going to be able to go to the theater. You know, you think about all of the deposits that you put down. I mean, just like any other business, you just start thinking about like, well, there's no way that you can recoup this money. So, you know, of course that's, that's a part of just any business is just thinking about the, the monetary aspect of it and how you're going to be able to overcome it and to survive. Um, Luckily, I, I remember sending an email, um, or actually, I, I filmed a, I'd sent an email out initially, and we just canceled rehearsal for the first week, and we still had hope that we were going to be able to to do it, and I remember thinking about scenarios of, of maybe we can rehearse this online, maybe we rehearse this through Zoom or, or something, you know? Um, so much of theater is about human interaction and how, you know, we um we read each other and how we move and it just i i couldn't cheapen the show that we had um by by trying to do something like that so the decision to postpone was definitely definitely really di difficult I, I sat down and i filmed an incredibly depressing <laughs> video that i sent out to uh to the cast where uh, now I, I watch it and I was like, ooh, that was really hitting me hard. I probably should have waited like another hour or so <laughs> and then sent that out. But, um, but yeah, I, I filmed this interview where I talked about uh, the, the show and, and these beautiful people that we had in it and, and the work that they had already put into it. And um, 
but in a positive way that no matter what, we were still going to do the show, and, and we are. Sadly, it means at the moment, the, the only way that we can think to see it is to push it back um, into the slot of our season where Murder on the Orient Express was in September, um, which is, of course, really sad to lose that show because we were really looking forward to doing it. it was very, it's a very fun uh, Agatha Christie um, written by Ken Ludwig, who's a really funny writer, um, which, which adds, it's nice to have that comedy in there. Um, but we're, so we're pushing that show to next season. Um, we're definitely not scrapping any of the shows that we have. We're not, I mean, it, it kind of felt like for a while that we had just balled up our season and thrown it in the garbage. It was like, we got to just start completely over. Um, because the way it's built up, we, we only have like a, a day or so between a show closing and the start of the next rehearsal. Um, so it's, it's kind of starting from scratch, but, um, but to kill a mockingbird is going to happen. It's, it's the show that fits most with our mission. We're very much for doing shows that facilitate change in our community. And I feel like it has an amazing message, um, that a, a story that really needs to be told. And we have so far only, um, sadly, uh, I, I almost said lost one of our actors. They're not, <laughs> they're not lost. They just uh, had a different project that they had to move to and, and which we totally understand um, if we move it to September. So uh, that, that was very sad. So like reorganizing the cast and trying to find somebody else who's going to fit into that part is going to be difficult, but um, it's just one of the, one of the things, one of the, the many, like you have to be adaptable on your feet. So did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> After a while, I talk for so long, I kind of forget what I was <laughs> what the initial question was <laughs> no that was so great and and it's it's so true that you know a lot of businesses have had to become adaptable to so many different things and you know how you're adapting is going to be different than how a law office is adapting or a dentist office or all these different things but the key thing is is that you have to adapt um, so I think that's really great that you're still finding those ways to adapt. Yeah. I mean, every, every local business owner that I talk to in town, they're all in the same, I mean, it, there's, there's something very, um, like they, they say that we're socially distant right now, but there's something about all being in the same boat. It feels like we're all distant from each other. I mean, like you and I, we see each other almost, you know, we see each other quite a lot downtown, like around the coffee shop and stuff. And I haven't seen you in a very long time, but it still feels like we're experiencing the same thing. We're all in the same boat trying to figure out how to move forward. And I think there's something that is very, um, uh, that, that's very comforting in that, that every person is just trying to figure this out. And it's this commonality that is, is kind of, it's kind of beautiful, even though there's, there's, it's all tragic. You know, there's a lot of tragedy, but there's beauty in the tragedy that, that all of us are, are experiencing this, this, this same thing, which is really what theater is, is gathering a bunch of people in a room to experience this one thing. Um, but uh, it, is, it is definitely, it's definitely hard. I've, I've been incredibly impressed with um, all of my friends who are business owners. I, it's, I, I seem to have a lot of them that are business owners in our town. And we have so many small businesses in our town. And I know that for us, we, we've been thinking how in the world we can still make an impact on our community, even though that we cannot perform right now. Like what are the ways that we can do? And it's been awesome that we've had people reach out to us for projects like, Hey, we need some help on this. Like, what do you think about, um, I'm doing this video. Can you help me edit it? I don't really understand what's going on there, but I want this to look nice. And, and, um, you know, we, we have this small business. We're trying to stay open in this way for our employees. So how can we support them? So figuring out ways to order online and to do all of this stuff. And I, I think the, the biggest thing for us that's, that's coming out of this is, uh, you know, not only noticing the resourcefulness of our amazing small business owners in our community, but, how um how much we need to support them and how much they support us you know i mean you think about uh well i mentioned the coffee shop so you think about tama grind downtown you know they they have adapted and they have made sure that we're still able to do something as simple as getting a cup of coffee which you know seems 
trivial, but whenever you're stuck at your house all day, there's something so nostalgic and comforting being able to get a cup of coffee from a coffee shop that you get to, to go to all the time, you know, that you're, that's part of your normal routine that takes you back to, you know, yeah, the things are kind of messed up right now and they're unprecedented and they're different, but here's something that makes me think of when it wasn't messed up. And it also pushes me towards the future of like, yeah, it's not going to always be this way. So. No, that's very, very, very true. Um, and it's, it's amazing what, just what you said, just what people have gotten out of this and how they are changing and updating and okay, what can I do or who can I reach out to that can help? Um, something that I'm working on. Um, so what are some ways so that you have been able to reach um, uh, your uh, students, kids? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can call them students. I mean, they're, students. I, I just, I just refer to them. As, yeah, there, there are our, um, all of our actors in our community, you know, we, it's been, uh, it's been very interesting, especially for me. I mean, uh, as far as we were talking about adapting, I mean, we've had to, I learned a lot about my personal teaching style I and mean, we do teach classes. I uh, teach classes at, um, I'm the drama teacher at country day school and I also teach classes at the Fox theater. And then we also teach classes with play on theater. And so I'm kind of all over the place, but, um, each one of these, you know, places that we teach, I, I teach in a room that is full of people and I feed so much off of that interaction. I was just discussing this with some other my, um, of my other teacher friends. Um, it is so amazing. And I think it's a credit to our community that our teachers have adapted so quickly. I mean, as a teacher, after you teach for, for a long time, it gets to where, you know, you don't really have to think about it. You get your style and, and this is the way, like I build my lessons this way and, and it works and I know it works and you spend years developing this, you know, and then it gets to a point where we're in now and you're teaching to a little square <laughs> basically and trying to make sure, I mean, you know, we were talking about this with, with just dance cause you work there as well about, you know, how do you still connect in the same way, even though that we're so distant and um, theater is, is very much a, an art form where you need to be in the same room with the other person. So, and especially when you're dealing with kids, like how do I get, you know, some of my, some of my, our little kids are in kindergarten. Like how do I get them to gather around a zoom call? and to hold their attention when I'm not, you know, this big guy towering in front of them being silly and, and keeping their attention. So what we have done is we've actually started recording our own acting classes. I mean, we, I turned my shop basically into a little film studio thing with my phone and, and we have been uh, cranking out acting lessons. And, and at first I, I was a little hesitant because I didn't think that, it was the, the right way to go about it. I just thought, well, you know, we should just postpone it. And that way we're still getting um, like, we'll postpone it. And then when we can be in the same room with the other people, that, that is probably for the best because that way they're really getting the, the education they need and the, their money's worth. And then I heard back from some parents and they were like, no, I mean, our kids are starving for the arts. Like they, they really need a creative outlet. And um, you know, you, sometimes you're wrong. And that was a minute where I was wrong. I was like, well, I need, I need to figure this out. I need to, you know, it's, I can't sit and, and just wait for this to be over. So um, we definitely had to jump in with both feet and, and, and start creating our own acting lessons online. So we've, uh, we've got, I think right now we've got about 10 lessons that, that we have that we've been sending, sending out and, um, the best thing that I, that I didn't expect, you know, sometimes when you're pushed into something, you're like, Oh, I'm a little weary of this, but it's been so, it, it's really done a lot for, you know, Lexi and I was for my heart anyway, um, getting these, these videos back from, uh, from our students, like, especially the, the kids, um, getting the videos back from the kids and how creative they're being and how passionate they are about getting to do these lessons that we send. And it just, every, every single time we, I mean, some of them we've watched four or five times just because we know it's going to put us in a better mood. So in some way, yeah, we're, we're being able to offer the service to the community, but it's also so great for us too. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's, 
we, you know, you said, you mentioned just dance and we've gotten a few of the videos of anywhere from our youngest students who are just, you know, moms putting on a song and they're rocking it out to our senior level students that are like, I'm still pushing. I was still working on this technique and now I've nailed it, you know, so that's, it's so true. So that's awesome that they are uh, being able to send you guys back things and even probably get a little bit more creative than they might've been in a class. Yes. That's, that's one thing that we, that we've been noticing. It's, it's interesting. You, you have to find the positive. And so one of the positives for this is um, when you're acting, it, it has a lot to do with, you know, you think about like if, if you and I are, are in this call right now and we're on we're scene partners I, the only thing that I can focus on is right in front of me I mean I can't I can't look away I can't pay attention to this world it's like it, it channels your focus and it centers you so that you have to just concentrate on the other person and reacting and how they're reacting to you and so it it, it almost it um, it brings this intimacy to it you know we, we, we try um, really hard to make sure that uh that our, our 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 acting students are focused in and paying attention but sometimes when you're in a, a big room and you got a bunch of people it's hard to to focus in on one thing and that is one interesting thing that i've seen is that they're really able to just kind of key in and take their time and and also being very creative i mean they they have a lot of time to dedicate <laughs> to just thinking about, you know, what do they want to do? And the possibilities in some ways are, are kind of endless. So, and then being able to see how they wrote their families into doing things is always fun. <laughs> that gets super interesting. I've, I've seen some of those. Um, what would you say to maybe um, a young kid right now, a teenager, an adult who is maybe thinking of, you know, hey, you know, I, I'd like to get either into theater or back into theater. What is some good information you have for them while they're at home right now? Yeah, one one thing I was reading this article the other day actually that was talking about, um, you know, this is a time where we're all kind of stuck at our house, but there is no better time to use this time to dedicate to something that you've always wanted to do, like learning how to play the guitar or taking a singing lesson, like really working on your voice. Um, you know, like I, I know some of our, our students are still taking voice lessons with uh, Lane Barry Miller still is teaching voice lessons on online. She's still doing this through, through Zoom. And, um, and I think that that is awesome. You know, we're, we're still teaching acting lessons. If, if there is something that you want to do that you've always kind of, thought about doing it really isn't a more comfortable time for you to do it i mean you you kind of can't you, you get to stay at your house you can just facetime in with somebody i mean we are offering private acting coaching it's, it's especially like for our seniors um who are thinking about going into theater for college it's not really you know you have to this would normally be the time where they're working on their monologues and songs for their auditions for college theater um, this summer for their theater auditions. So if if that is something that that you're worried about because now you you can't go to your theater class, you don't have that person to, to reach out to. We we are using this time to do private acting coaching. If that's something that you're wanting to get together is is an audition or prep for an audition for a school. Um, if it's that you need to do some some uh, audition videos that if that's what your college is asking for, this is a great time to, to reach out and to find somebody who is, uh, who is used to doing those things. I mean, video auditions are, are very much a part of the acting world, even when there's not a quarantine happening. So it's, it's something that I'm used to doing and there is definitely a formula to it. If that, that's something that you need to reach out and talk about, you can always email us. Um, if you're wanting to take those acting classes, you can email us or call us and we are we're definitely here as Much as we can be for the community. So if, if that's something that you're you're looking for uh, if, if you're looking for a creative outlet, it's, it's still there You know our community has a huge art scene for our size a huge art scene um, And I know like just dance is still offering stuff. Y'all are still teaching your classes um, it's there's there's not a shortage it's definitely still not sure i mean and and if it's if you're looking for ways to support those people 
if you're, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's good to still support the local businesses where, you know, you, you get things like takeout and, and where you can go and you can shop for clothes online. It's the same thing for our arts communities. You know, River Oaks just did one of their shows for, uh, for pottery. It's, it's still something that you can reach out and say, Hey, I want to reserve this piece. Uh, it's something that I want to buy when this is over. Or if you're wanting an acting lesson, you still need, we still need to support those artists because they rely so much on the community to come to those shows and to, to get things um, so that we can still, when this is over, still have a thriving arts community. So I think when we're still thinking about supporting our local businesses, you should still think about supporting your local artists. I, I love that. That was perfect. Um, and it, it's so true because, you know, I think everybody says, what's life without art? I think that's a quote. I don't know who said it. So, but <laughs> it's just so true. And I got, I get, I spoke with Aubrey, uh, as well. And, you know, I joke, like I cannot draw. I'm terrible. Like not even stick figures look good, but like my art, my passion is dance, you know? And so, pick up a trade, pick up, you know, if you are wanting to do, learn something new. So I love that. And I love that you guys are able to offer that. And maybe right now to offer it in a way that people are actually able to do it. So. Yeah. You know, some people talk about, well, I've just, I haven't had the time. I, I, I work too much or, you know, it's, it's, it's um, school is, we have too much going on with school and that's understandable. But right now, for the most part, I mean, I know some people are, are, still you know the schoolwork is still happening but you know for the most part we've got a lot more free time during our day where we can schedule things a, very, a little bit differently so um it's definitely more flexible there's not a better time really to to jump in and see if this is something that you are interested in that you can dedicate your time to in the future because there's so many opportunities and when this is over those opportunities will still be there so i'm i'm very <laughs> obviously very excited for whenever this is this is over i do think that it's going to be interesting it's one of those things that we're we've been that's been weighing on us is you know as we start to to phase out of of the of being quarantined to our homes and social distancing what is that going to mean for events i know that's something that people especially on large scales that that uh, i've been reading about and other people's opinions about what's going to happen and and it's almost, it got to a point where I was like, I, I can't read it anymore. But somebody said, oh, it'll be two years before people go to a concert or to see a show. And it was like, ah, oh, oh, no, <laughs> like, we, can't, we can't do that. Um, but I, I do think that it is, going to be, uh, it is going to be interesting when this is over. I've been so proud of the theater, my friends in theater that are um, still finding ways to reach their community that are doing live streams of the shows that they had been in and that those theaters are still trying to find ways to pay their actors that way. Um, some really great resources right now online. There's been really no better time to watch theater. Um, the National Theater in London is posting a, a live stream of one of their pre-recorded shows from their archives every single week. So they have anything from from like last week we watched Treasure Island. Last night I watched their version of Twelfth Night, which was amazing. If you have a student, if if, if you have a, a student in your home who's like a high school age that are that are reading these things in their class as a part of their their testing, I know I think they read Frankenstein in high school sometimes. I know Country Day reads it in eighth grade, but um, it is an amazing adaptation of Frankenstein. It's got Benedict Cumberpatch in it. It's amazing. He's so good, so so good. Um, there are just, and, and dance, even for just dance, there's so many um, professional dance companies that are putting up their, their shows and operas. I mean, their museums are doing virtual tours. I mean, the arts are still very much there. And that's one thing that I had to say for our arts community across the, like around the world, you really see how important the arts are in these times where people are looking for an escape trying to, to, to find meaning in things, you can take a tour of a museum and they're making it available for you. I mean, how amazing is that? You know, to, it's instead of, oh, I got to pay to go, I can just sign in on my computer and I can walk around the museum. I mean, it's great. Our, our museum in Alexandria is doing the same thing. But it's important to know that when we do those things, we still need to offer up donations to them because they 
are still paying electric bills <laughs> and trying to pay their employees for the most part. And it's art is not cheap, but it's not something you make a lot of money on for sure. Yeah, and I definitely think that um, I think every artist in whatever your art form is, whatever your vocation is, it's such a passion. And I think that's something that I've enjoyed talking to other artists um, and whatever their, again, vocation is, is that the passion that has come out, and, and even if it's not an art, but just the passion that I've seen come from so many small business owners of how passionate they are about their job, about their employees, about our community um, has really come out of this. And again, not that it was something I feel like, especially in central Louisiana, that we didn't know, but it has come full force that we are going to support each other no matter what it is. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, I think it's really important to remember when all of this is over that those small businesses and our local artists, our musicians, everybody is they're really going to need our support. I mean, you think when you want to go out and have a good time with your friends, you go out to, I don't know, Finnegan's or the, the mirror room or, or something after you go eat or, or at Embers or Tamagrind and there's a band there. I mean, you think, Oh, this is awesome. There's a, a band here, but that, that person, this is, that's their, their life. They're not able to do that anymore. And so a thing that is a, is a stress release for you or something that's relaxing for you and fun for you and your friends, those people, this is, that's their passion and, and what they do for a living. And they're going to need our support more than ever. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that support come. I mean, I think that the arts have always been there for our community. Um, I think that right now people are seeing it even more. Uh, especially I, I know that I'm seeing it even more um, and I've been we've been so thankful to play on theater for all of the support that we've been getting I mean we we every day I get a text message or a, an, an amazing email or a, a comment on our blog post that we send out or on our Facebook or Instagram from people just saying you know we're so excited to for this to be over to see your show we're so excited that you guys are, are still here we hope that you are okay for our community and our supporters, our audience, who we love so much, for them to take the time out of their day and to send something to us, that, that's amazing. And I, I hope that that support will continue forward. I think it definitely shows us as a society that you know, we really do need each other. And that's, this is how we move forward. It's how our community becomes greater um, in central Louisiana is that we continue to support each other. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, well, Cody, thank you so much for talking with me today. Um, I, uh, I don't know, I forget who it is tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, on Fridays, I think we talked about this, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber has been promoting oh, yeah. of his shows. <laughs> I, like, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> uh, he's premiering some of his shows and I like when I get off of work that is like what I've been doing on Fridays because it's, it's I know that I've seen some really fun things from people like even though you can't go to the theater like there's still the whole family is is dressing up and having dinner and then sitting down to watch the show as if they're still going out to the theater which I just love I think that's so cool like trying to find that normalcy still in your house. And it's, it's fun. It's, it's, I think it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we are going to put um, contact information for play on theater company in the comments. And then um, Cody, if you have anything too, that you want to make sure people know about, and we look forward to it. To Kill a Mockingbird is going to be able to come out. I definitely want to come see the show. Um, is there anything else you want any, anybody to know? Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if you're interested in what's going on with us, for sure, the best thing that the best resource that we really have is, is our website. And on our website, we have um, on one of the tabs, if you go to our blog, it pretty much tells you everything about us from the beginning to now. We're still trying to make sure that we're updating that post quite often. Um, if you really want to, you know, find out how we got started, even though we kind of covered that in the beginning, all of that is in there. Um, where we're planning on this going in the future that is in there too. You know, we talk about how we feel about performance and what it can do for our community. Um, I 
it, it's one of the blog is definitely one of those things that I never thought that we would be doing, but it is, it's, it's become a very nice way for us to really show the community exactly how we feel about things because sometimes it's a little easier to, to write it out and for somebody to, to come at it from their own perspective. Um, so I'd say head on over to our blog, uh, subscribe to it or follow it. Uh, we also have, um, our YouTube channel is, is something that we try to update a lot. We do some, some videos. Um, one thing that we're looking forward to starting in the future is uh, we're going to start doing a, like a director's and actor's roundtable discussion, um, which I'm really excited about. You know, that's one thing Chris and I were going to be doing anyway for To Kill a Mockingbird. We were going to sit around actually this table, which was our greater tuna table, and talk about the, the shows that, that we have coming up and what – our process is for building those things um, and why we want to do them. So that's one thing that we're excited about in the future. Uh, we also have our, our Instagram and our Facebook. I mean, there's so many ways for you to stay involved with what we're doing. Um, it's just really which medium you want to choose that's best for you. So um, I don't know, pick your poison and stay up to date with us, I guess. That's all I'm saying. Continue to support people and we can't wait to, be able to perform for you again. That's really the thing. And be creative for, for you. That's really what, that's really all I got. And thank you, Jessica, for doing this. I think it's so awesome. I love all these interviews that you've been putting out. It's so great seeing other businesses supporting other businesses. And Ugly Mug is, you know, that's one of those things we were talking about. The support is always there and you see it all the time, but I think it's almost heightened now. And, and really our community is so blessed to have you know, the company, this, this company that Wayne has started because it does so much for our community. It really builds it up and elevates it to a level. I mean, you think about, you know, Wayne's ability and the people that he has gathered around him and that's a sign of great leadership. I know I'm kind of going on this weird tangent and I'm really sorry, but it's a sign of a great leader. I think of the same way as a director when you have a, a good cast that really rallies around a show. And I'm always so envious of him and the way that he is able to really get every single you know, one of, of you guys and your team members to rally around a central idea and to really, I think that central idea is building up the community because what's great for the community is great for all of our business. So thank you. <laughs> that was beautiful. I could probably just cut that right there and make that just a segment. <laughs> Wayne, would, Wayne would love it. Actually, Wayne would probably be like. He's just going to roll his eyes and be like, oh my goodness awesome well thank you so much Cody I really appreciate your time and um, again let's a support local businesses and let's keep supporting the arts because we want shows of any caliber to be able to still be here in central Louisiana so thanks so much Cody I hope everybody has a great day